Good morning. I'm Robert Pearson from Auto Spray Systems. We supply small electric tractors to farmers in the UK. Some of you will have seen the exciting news that John Deere plan to trial their autonomous tractor control system this year. But don't get too excited. This isn't that demonstration. As you can see, our tractors are rather different, a little bit smaller, a lot more electric, and also available now. It's a great shame that we can't be meeting in person today, in which case you'd have had a chance to get your hands on these little tractors yourself. However, I hope I've prepared the second best and this short video will explain how these tractors can be used on farms today in the UK to protect your most natural asset, your soil. The R150, like any good tractor, is ready for just about any job you can throw at it. It's been designed to spend less time in the barn and more time working. But what exactly is it? Well, it's an all-electric, lightweight, 4x4, multifunction, autonomous farm vehicle. Catchy title, eh? Let me break that down. Its drivetrain is all-electric. It uses a pair of high-capacity 48-volt batteries to power all four wheels and drive any attachments. The twin battery setup means you can hot swap batteries without powering down, effectively meaning it can work indefinitely. In high intensity applications, like fan assisted spraying, a pair of batteries will last for around two hours, and in lower intensity applications, like towing and transporting, they will last for around four to eight hours. But how long do these batteries take to charge, I hear you ask? From a standard 13 amp mains plug, a scant 22 minutes. But if you're in a rush, you can use the infield charging station, which will charge a pair of batteries in 13 minutes. At just over a meter wide, the small robot with batteries weighs in at only 200 kilos, which means you've got a super lightweight vehicle, which all but eliminates soil compaction. Not only does it protect the soil structure, but it also protects the user. There's a natural safety that comes from working with small, lightweight equipment that could well protect your structure if things go wrong. The robot may be small, but it's no weakling. The powerful 4x4 drivetrain has a thousand newton meters of torque on instant tap, which means it can really handle rough terrain. As you can see here from the footage taken during one of the wettest weeks of the year, even when a field is absolutely waterlogged, the lightweight robot is able to skip over the surface, scarcely leaving a mark. Try that in a conventional tractor and you might have a few problems. But of course, no piece of new tech is any use if it's so complicated to set up that you have to ask a teenager for help. Like most things these days, the robot is controlled from a simple, visual phone app. As you can see, it's all very intuitive whether you're controlling one robot or a swarm of five. You'll also be relieved that the robot itself is very simple. It's a straightforward flatbed design with four wheels, two motors and batteries, a strong ladder chassis and a box for the RTK navigation. All the clever stuff happens on the phone so any new functionality comes with the over-the-air software updates. Okay, so we've established what it is, but it's what it can do that's of real interest. This is a brand new class of farm vehicle, and it's only now that we're discovering how farmers want to use it. Originally, it was designed as an autonomous spray platform, so let's start there. It can be supplied with a demountable fan-assisted spray system which is perfect in fruit growing and orchard settings. As you can see, there are twin spray cannons with very powerful fan assistance. These cannons can be fully synchronized or controlled independently, and with a six meter vertical or horizontal reach from each cannon, it can cover up to 12 meters in a single pass. They are being used to treat apples, cherries, vines, plums, strawberries, and raspberries. It's even been used to spray the flies on compost production sites. But the simple flatbed design of the robot makes the platform ripe for modification. One of the first adaptions was the addition of a trailer hitch. We designed this with a neat swan neck design which allows the robot to do its party piece 360 degree skid turns. 
In fact, we've had trailers loaded with over a ton being pulled quite happily. But you don't need to pull a trailer. You can simply drop a pallet on the back and load it up. If it can spray, it can spread. So one farmer has mounted a little APV granule spreader on the back and plans to use it for slug pelleting when it gets really wet. When it comes to use cases, you're really only limited by your imagination. But what's totally unique about the robot is the range of ways it can go about these tasks. There are four ways that the robot can be used. Manual control. You can use the robot like any remote control vehicle using the simple handset. This is great indoors or around animals or in any volatile setting. Here you can see Andy taking a spin round cereals this year the easy way. The feedback he gave us was it just needs a drink holder and a hands-free kit to be the perfect show transport. Next up is follow me mode. This does exactly what it says on the tin. Pop the remote in your top pocket and the robot follows quietly behind, stopping automatically at a safe distance. This is ideal if you're out fencing or simply poo picking in the pony's paddock. Then we have shuttle mode. You simply set it a route between two points and at the touch of a button, the robot will shuttle backwards and forwards between the two points. Imagine this in a fruit picking scenario with a flatbed trailer behind for the pickers to place their full punnets running up and down the field to the collection point. And of course, the robot was designed to operate autonomously. This is when it's at its most productive. Once you've mapped your field or plotted your route, you can set the robot working and then get on with something else. What's becoming the norm is that one operator will manage two or three robots simultaneously, significantly improving productivity. I've talked a little bit about how people are modifying their robots for different tasks, but you don't need to be a mechatronics engineer to do this. We supply the robots with a simple to use expansion module. This allows you to access the robot's power supply to run most electronic attachments and its RTK navigation system for positional control. Every month I hear of people using the robot for something novel, whether it's feeding the pheasants on an estate with a sheep snacker pulled behind, to latex collection on rubber plantations in West Africa. Everyone is finding their own applications for the robot. These little robots were not intended to replace your full-size tractors, they're simply another tool to add to your barn. As I've shown you, in the UK, we're at the beginning of our electric autonomous farm vehicle journey. But in other countries around the world, this is part of their current daily work routine. In Australia, Asia, China, South America, and even countries in Europe, the use of electric drones and robots is standard practice. Spurred on by labor shortages, rising costs of chemicals, environmental pressures, and a lighter regulatory framework, Farmers in these countries are reaping the benefits of autonomous farming today. When we launched the robot at Serials 2021, we showed how drones and robots can work seamlessly together to free up farm labour and improve efficiency. And while we may be one or two years away from seeing drones as commonplace farm tools, robots are now finding a place on farms up and down the country. And it seems that even DEFRA agrees with our vision of the future with the launch of the Improving Farm Productivity Fund in mid-January this year. This is designed to support the adoption of exactly this sort of technology. But it's not just about attaching productive tools to the robot. We're working with some of the UK's leading agricultural academics and research companies to develop sensors and software that will measure the soil's nitrogen content in real time and then the robot will apply exactly the right amount of fertiliser with the highest possible precision, autonomously. According to figures from AHDB, when you consider that 28% of a farm's carbon footprint can be attributed to the production of the fertiliser used on it, a further 36% to the use of that fertiliser in the fields, and 16% to the fuel burnt on the farm, Reducing the amount of fertiliser used to a minimum is not only good for the environment and crop yield, but it's also good for the bottom line. Before I wrap up this section of the video, I'd like to pass you over to Andrew. He's a farmer from East Yorkshire, 
for his views on how small electric tractors can be put to good use on farms. Hi, I'm Andrew. I work on a small farm in uh, East Yorkshire. Uh, using the small electric tractor to replace any normal small compact tractor around the farm. So pulling a small trailer with hay in around the horses where the quiet electric motor is useful, doesn't disturb them, doesn't upset anything. Also handy for carrying heavy loads towards machinery, tools, anywhere where you'd basically use a wheelbarrow, you could use this for a lot less effort. So it has benefits definitely being an electric vehicle over a, a traditional diesel tractor. It's much quieter. The maintenance required is much lower. Obviously, it's just a matter of charging the batteries up once a day, a quick check of the tyres and chains, and, and away it goes. So we've got it set up on the trailer currently. It, it can do basically anything that a small conventional tractor would do. So it can pull a, a lawn mower type thing. It can also be a sprayer with a sprayer attached to it or a grass harrow, just the same. Basically anything a small compact tractor would do, this can do in its own way as well. So currently you've seen us using it in manual mode where I'm just bringing it, controlling it with the remote. It also has autonomous functions that will let it go off on its own. I can set it off into a paddock with a chain harrow and just allow it to work the entire paddock to learn and lets me monitor other things, do other jobs while just checking up on it every so often. So, it, use for anything, I mean, obviously, currently in its trailer mode, it's there helping around just carrying heavy loads, making, generally making life easier for the operator so that they aren't having to carry a wheelbarrow or physically manually carry heavy loads around. Yeah, electric's ideal. Um, we recharge it using green energy, either solar panels on the sheds or the wind turbines. This, this means that it's basically economical to run and it's also as close to carbon neutral as we can get. These small electric tractors are not going to magically transform the health of your soil or the productivity of your farm or indeed the profitability of your farm for that matter, but they will play an important part in the future in all of those areas. It's a very exciting time to be involved in agricultural technology, and if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to take those now. Thank you.